So we let go of the false belief about ourselves and we bring love to the unloved places within. We realize that whatever enabled us to survive and feel, feel safe in the past is basically an untrue story about who we are. We don't need it anymore. The subpersonality we adopted to get our meet, needs met, that's the essence of our story. These subpersonalities, these archetypes of self-betrayal need to be dismantled. Either they are dismantled when the hurricane comes in and smacks us, or they are dismantled consciously when we simply detach from them and recognize this is not who I am. That was a role I was playing, but that's not who I am. Oh. Bless you. Okay, now, remember, you're not the only one who bought the story, right? All your old friends, your family members, everybody who knows you from the past, they bought that story too, and they think you're still that story. So it's hard to give birth to the true self in those rooms. You need different rooms where midwives can come in and help you who know about the rebirth process. Those people don't know about it. They're still living in their story. They can't help you. They love you, but they can't help you. They don't understand. In fact, you might be really threatening to them. Because when they see you, they go, oh my god, I don't ever want to go there. That people say this to all the time. If that's what the real happiness work is, I don't want the real happiness work. <laughs> you know? And they run as far as they can, as fast as they can go. Because they don't want to look like a mess. Well, guess what? The caterpillar in the cocoon is a mess. It's messy work to be reborn. Part of us has, has to die for 20 or 30 years, maybe longer. We've been wearing a mask, believing that's who we are. And then when our pain finally rose up and our soul rebelled and said, that's enough, I can't take it anymore, things began to shift. So now we're at the turning point, step eight. Okay, the mask cannot be sustained forever. It begins to crack, the roll becomes uncomfortable. Self-betrayal becomes palpable. The story is questioned. You ask, is this who I really am? And the answer is no. It's who I used to be, but this is not who I am. I might not be able to answer the other question, who am I? But I know this is not who I am. So we can't go on with business as usual. You see, it just has to stop. The world that we have created doesn't work anymore. So there's part of us that still thinks, well, I'm in this spiritual process. I ought to be able to function in life. Guess what? Can't function anymore. That's why it's so easy to judge this. It's so easy to put it down. You go to a regular therapist, they say, well, let me give you some drugs so you can cope better. That's not what you really need to do is, is to cope better is to put your mask back on and go to, into work that you hate or be in a relationship in, in which you've given your power away. That's not what is necessary. But most therapists, that's what they're going to give you. You know, go back into that life and get your act together. And here's some drugs to help you do that. But the spiritual therapist, the one who is a guide through this process, says, well, I understand. Your life doesn't work. And I'm not going to send you back in there to try to put Humpty Dumpty to bed back together again. I'm not going to do that. I know this is a holy process. I know it doesn't look pretty. It didn't look pretty for me when I went through it. But it's okay. Trust me. It's okay. 